Okay, I am going to kick things off. Uh, we've got quite a lot to get through, so I'm going to make sure that you guys get the most out of this hour. So first of all, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are super excited to speak to you guys about unlocking AI-driven insights with Tableau, Cloud and Pulse. Um, for those of you that aren't yet on cloud, have no fear. We will be talking about how we can move you from server onto cloud later on in the webinar. So our agenda today, we're going to run through introductions. We're going to enter into the next wave of analytics. Then we're going to do, we're going to touch on Pulse and do a, a Pulse demo as well. Um, then we're going to talk about how to scale your analytics within Tableau Cloud how to move you from server into the cloud if that is something that you're looking to do and then we're going to talk about customer success stories specifically with tab move um, so we're going to finish things off with a q a just so you guys are all aware we have booked up an hour and a half for this i know um, but obviously we understand that you guys have very busy days so essentially the full hour is going to be filled with content and then the half an hour at the end is going to be specifically catered towards Q&A. So if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat and we'll answer them at the end of the webinar. If you don't have time, that's not a problem. Um, we, you can set up some time and we can have a call with you at a later date. Um, so no problem there. Speakers who will be speaking to you guys today. So you have myself and Tom Clark. We are both working in the sales team over at BizTree. We are also joined today by Will Ashworth, who will be talking about the Pulse side of things, and he's joining us from Tableau. And then last but certainly not least, we've got Timo, who is our lead developer over at BizTree. He is going to be helping with the Q&A that will be taking place at the end of the webinar. Okay, so I'm going to jump right in. Okay, so also just um, a caveat here, you will, if, if those of you who attended Tableau Conference, we have copied some of their slides. So if you feel you've seen these before, it's because you have. Okay, so we are in an AI revolution. What does that mean? Essentially, AI is allowing us to do more with the time that we currently have. So it's allowing us to be more productive. And in allowing us to be more productive, it enables us to reduce expenses, it enables us to improve customer relations, and it enables us to improve outcomes as a business in general. So AI is helping us achieve more within our day than we were ever able to before, which obviously sounds great, but it's not as simple as just switching on your AI or your Tableau Pulse and all of a sudden you're gonna reap the benefits. It's very important to know that it's a, you need to have a data strategy in order to reach that level of AI. So this is an interesting stat that was also spoken to at TC, um, talking about how 81% of leaders want to implement AI, but a big chunk of that 81% don't have the data strategy that enables this to do so. And I just want to bring you guys your attention to the fact that, yes, AI is the buzzword at the moment. It's shiny, it's new, it's exciting. But at the foundation of AI is still data. And it's really important that we do not forget the data is the foundation of AI. So we need to be able to build a data strategy in order to really harness the power of AI. So just touching on data and analytics throughout the years, this really just sums up how far data has come over the course of the last 30 years. You have wave one, which is full service. That essentially is when you actually needed code in order to gain insights from data. So we're still working with data, we're still gaining insights, but we're not fully, it's, it's pretty stagnant, it's still pretty slow, it's not as easy to use. Then we move into wave two self-service this is where tableau comes in and shines and it is essentially when you have the end users wanting to generate their own insights and actually being able to so as tableau say as tableau says it allows people to see and understand data this is exactly what wave two was all about allowing people to drill down on certain insights that they have drag and drop etc and then we have wave three 
So wave three is the future of Tableau. And I would say currently we're somewhere in between wave two and wave three. We're moving towards AI. We're moving towards Pulse. We're moving towards Copilot. I mean, we've got Pulse currently at our fingertips. We're moving towards Copilot. But really what wave three is all about is personalization. So if we look at Tableau Pulse, I'm able as a user to literally track a KPI that I want to see and I can download it onto my phone and make sure that I'm tracking that KPI every day. So again, focusing on the personalization of AI and essentially what we are saying is that with Wave 3, with Wave 3, we are wanting to allow you to have AI driven insights at your fingertips. Which again, really exciting statement and if leveraged in the correct way can be extremely powerful and have incredible results. But as I mentioned before, there is a strategy that needs to be put in place. So we believe that we need these five key steps in place in order for you to really gain the benefits from AI. So as I mentioned originally, data strategy, very important. You need to know where you're going. You need to have a direction. Your data all needs to be in one place. This day and age, you need to be on the cloud in order to harness the AI features. As we know, um, Pulse and Copilot are native specifically to the cloud, so you will have to be there. Once you're in the cloud, you are able to deliver AI-powered insights. And finally, you'll then be able to collaborate with other AI-driven analytics products. So I hope that gives you guys a little bit of background into what AI is, why there is such a fuss about it. And I'm now going to hand over to Mr. Will Ashworth, who is going to talk to you guys a little bit about Tableau Pulse, which I'm sure you're all excited to hear. Let me just hand over to Will. Wonderful, Josie. Thank you very much for passing that through there. Um, and uh, thank you for kind of setting the scene of what we're going to be talking about today regarding sort of AI. Um, so when I say to you um, that AI has the power to change everything we do, I don't think that is a, a statement that this is the first thing time people are hearing this, right? We've all seen, you know, the staged releases of things like ChatGPT um, and other AI solutions hitting the market. And we're aware of really the, just the effect this is going to have um, on every industry and every department. Because it already is, right? It's already spanning across industries and departments and it's already helping people to be more productive, write better code or even analyze legal documents. I mean, I use it every day uh, currently to help write my emails and we use, even use AI uh, to record our, um, some of our customer calls and generate insights into those calls as well. And to be honest, your data is no different to that. So AI can help people analyze data, make better decisions, and grow your business faster than ever before. But as we've mentioned, there is this kind of expectation that AI is a shiny new tool, something that everybody wants to get involved with. In fact, everybody I'm speaking to now, my customers, are saying that they want AI now, but they don't know how to implement it. And that's because there's kind of this current gap of, of AI that we've seen in something like ChatGPT. I mean, that reached, what was it, 100 million users in about two months. That was beating TikTok's nine months or Instagram's two and a half years. And part of that meteoric rise was due to the fact of easy access to data and an accessible user interface. So while we're seeing this adoption on the consumer level, we're seeing that about 63% of companies really lack those mature AI strategies and these capabilities to operationalize. And this goes back to Joseph's point, you know, AI runs on data, ChatGPT runs on data. So if you're trying to get ready for AI, the first step we need to think about is getting your data ready for AI. But what I really like about this particular slide is the word operationalize. So how are you planning on getting AI into the hands of the people in your business that need it the most? And a lot of the time, these companies are struggling to get these necessary insights into existing workflows where people are already spending their time. So you're asking yourself a question, how do I close that gap and how do I close it fast? So at Tableau, we know there's an opportunity to transform the way people are finding insights today and close that gap. And currently, a lot of our organizations we work with, whether they're existing customers or new customers, they're very adept at getting those, that insight and data to C-level or, or you know, senior people within the business to make those decisions. 
but actually there are thousands of other decisions happening every single day in your businesses that are currently being made without data or without the necessary ins those necessary insights being hard to find. So this leaves not only your C-level, but other people in your organization operating in the dark. And it also means that your data investment is not being realized. And that's why when we hear 94% of business leaders feel that their organizations should be getting more value of, this, of its data, it's because all these thousands of decisions are being made without the proper insights. So if you can increase successful decision making by giving insights to people all through your business, this can be transformational. But how do you go about doing this? This is one of the ways that AI can bring insights to where you make where you work to make those better decisions. So thanks to the power of AI, we're unlocking these insights, we're giving everyone access instantly wherever they work, which allows them to make faster and more informed decisions and just be more successful. Imagine right now if every person in your business could find insights very quickly inside their flow of work, their data is in real time, they make those informed decisions. How transformational is this for a business? And this is really where Tableau Pulse is addressing that particular challenge. So Tableau Pulse is completely reimagining analytics to make it more personal, contextual, and intelligent. It's already helping our customers to transform outcomes by visualizing metrics that matter to them. So you, by using Tableau Pulse, you get a curated set of metrics and insights personalized to your work. And this allows you to discover new opportunities, get ahead of issues, and just in genuinely make better decisions. By infusing things like Pulse directly into the places where your teams are working, whether it be inside of their email, Salesforce, Slack, and actually later this year, Teams, customers can get reliable and contextual information when and where they need it to be. And with the generative AI feature throughout, the experience our customers are seeing is the ability to quickly identify and communicate insights with AI. What Tableau Pulse is doing is automatically detecting and generating insights. It summarizes that information for you and it enables quick on-demand exploration so everyone in your business can start asking questions of their data. And by it being available on your desktop and your mobile, it's always insight at your fingertips. Essentially, we're making it easier for non-data people by automatically identifying the insights and notifying users of what they need to know about so they can go and take action. We've enhanced things like natural language search capabilities and included generative AI so it can translate a vague question into an analytical query. So now our efforts to use this AI and make data easier to, for everyone to go beyond just a simple viewing a report means we're creating an entirely new way of working. In fact, no one else in the industry is currently doing this. Essentially, in a nutshell, we're breaking down the barriers of entry for everyone in your business to be able to quickly and easily ask questions of your data. But we're not just stopping here. Some people may have already seen some information about Einstein Copilot for Tableau being released later this year. Um, it's already actually available on beta for our cloud customers. And essentially what Copilot does is it aids your user through the data exploration, exploration process. So it recommends the best ways for you to tell a compelling visual story. It helps you to write visual, like write complex analytical expressions. Essentially imagine it as kind of a chat GPT bot for your Tableau experience, where you can ask how to write a calculation, ask to visualize data, and it's gonna just pop that up straight away for you. So really what we're talking about here is that AI has caused everything to change in all industries, across all departments, and especially analytics. We see more and more now that things like dashboards, reports, visualizations, these are table stakes, they've become commoditized. It no longer provides a competitive advantage by having just that data to be made large company decisions. What we're seeing now is the consumer era of business intelligence. And this requires the insights to be within the flow of work. I'm not moving or wasting time going elsewhere to find those insights. This analytics should fit, not dictate your technology investments. You should be able to deploy this technology in a composable and secure way without taking away focus from other projects. So by being, what I want to show you now today is actually, if you were to be a Tableau Cloud customer, how you can turn on Tableau Pulse and actually start using this today. So we have Tableau Pulse already in, in our environment here. All it does is a few clicks to be able to turn it on inside your environment. And as we can see straight away, it's actually a completely different page. It's a very different way that we're going to have our end users be interacting with data. We'll be focusing more on metrics rather than dashboards here. So I've already got a published data source on my Tableau Cloud site, and I'm going to create a new metric definition. 
Now, today I'm going to be looking at my opportunity data. In this particular um, sort of scenario, I'm a head of sales at an organization and I want to understand how my pipeline has been progressing over the quarter. So I'm going to create my metric here. Um, and I know, you know, maybe not that data literate, but I know realistically that I want to understand that um, it's going to be the amount of pipelines, what I want to visualize. And I need to do it over a time dimension. So I'm going to do it over close date. So after that loads up straight away with two clicks, I already have that insight of the performance of my month to date pipeline. Tableau Pulse is also giving me an insight to my performance over a previous period or a previous year. But I want to be able to dig further into this data. And I know when I share this with other people in my organization, they're going to have follow up questions. So I want to be able to empower them to do so. So I also want to understand in my pipeline, maybe I want to know um, which of my accounts um, I am particularly doing well with or um, building out that pipeline. I also want to understand where in my stages that I'm, am I seeing uh, most of my pipeline? Is it progressing forward? Also, as head of sales, I probably want to know which of my salespeople are actually you know, doing their jobs and building that pipeline out. And finally, as well, I know a few people are actually quite interested at the moment about which industry are we um, more successful with. So you may not have seen a lot change, but underneath here is creating these metric definitions or filters that allow me to dig further into it once I publish it. But just before I go, I want to tell the insights that when the value is going up, this is favorable, right? I'm ahead of sales, my pipeline increases. This is always something I'm going to be happy about. So I save my definition here. And the first thing I want to do is follow this. This is then going to appear in my home page. And we can see here, we've got a tracking of our metric here. Um, I want to be able to change this currently actually to quarter to date. And as soon as I do that, not only does the metric change, but also the insights that I've been um, I've created are changing here. And this is where it's being automatically generated for me. But now I want to ask a follow-up question based off those other filters I included. Well, down here, we have some quick buttons we can click on to understand what is our trend, which stage is currently having the most amount of pipeline, which industry are we maybe not being more successful with. So by creating those extra filters there, I'm allowing the next person or myself to really carry on that level of exploration into the data and understand what else is happening within my pipeline. If I want to, I can use my ask function here where I can use natural language processing. But also one of the fantastic parts here is I can then set up a cadence in which this is going to be sent to me. So we currently have it available for Slack and email. As I mentioned, Teams integration is coming later this year. And because pipeline is important to me, um, I'm actually going to have that on a daily cadence where every single morning I'm going to receive a Slack notification or an email. Um, it's going to let me know about any changes that I've seen in that pipeline. And then maybe I want to add some other people in my organization, maybe my CRO is um, interested in this particular metric. And I'm going to add them in here. As you can see, my, my CRO is also called Will Ashwood. Um, and straight away, they're going to be added into that cadence and they're going to be receiving that information in their homepage. So every time I log into here, I'm going to have all these metrics that I'm following, whether I created them or not, that are going to be telling me about my business. So what does this look like in a more mature environment with more metrics? Well, this is based off another sales data source that we see here. We can see in the top left hand corner, the generative AI is automatically creating a sort of a small breakdown of the main things that have changed in my data. It's telling me what's probably the most important things for me to look into. And I can look back into my pipeline here. And because with this particular one, we have much more um, filters included, I can really start drilling down more interestingly into my follow up questions here as well. So, this is something that was only released earlier this year. There are many releases happening, all of our quarterly releases happening this year. So, it's a really fantastic time to be talking about sort of analytics and AI in your, in your organization and really how you can start leveraging Tableau Pulse for cloud within your business today and sort of infusing that directly into your day-to-day um, -day business. So I think after that, I'm gonna pass across to um, Tom, um, who's gonna be taking you through the tab move process and how you can move from server to cloud today. Thank you very much, Will. Should be able to see. Yes, oh. wonderful, thanks Tom. Not that, not that one, one second. Yeah. 
should just be popping up any second now. There we go. Amazing. Oh, nice. Lovely. All right. Thanks so much, Will. That was a really, really great uh, demo of Pulse uh, and also of Tableau Cloud and its capabilities and what's coming in the future. Um, what I'm going to talk about is how we're going to get you from server to cloud. So if you've already got a Tableau Cloud instance, this might not be relevant for you, but please do stick around um, because we've got a really good uh, Q&A session coming uh, at the end. Uh, so please do stick around for that. So first, why are we seeing customers migrate from... It is probably worth noting that this is going to be recorded as well. So we will send out a recording once this is done. Carry yeah, on. That's, that's right. Um, so yeah, why, why are we seeing customers migrate uh, to the cloud? First off, innovation. Uh, as Will said there, Tableau Pulse, Einstein Copilot, these are cloud only features. So if you want access to these, uh, these amazing features that are upcoming, you've got to be on the cloud. The server isn't getting the same level of attention as, as Tableau Cloud. So um, definitely worth being on there for that. The overhead, we all know how expensive it can be to run a server. Uh, with Tableau Cloud, you've got a fully hosted environment. There's no server management costing. Upgrades and maintenance in this regard are taken care of as well. With regard to security, uh, obviously this is quite a significant concern. Uh, we're seeing that uh, large finance institutions, insurance companies, and even airlines are moving to the cloud because they trust uh, Tableau Cloud uh, uh, is a secure enough environment for, for them to put their data. And obviously security is such a, an important uh, aspect for, for all companies. Lastly, scalability. This refers to Tableau's flexible offering um, in terms of the role-based licensing and how you can grow at your own pace. Okay, now I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about the challenges and things to consider when you're migrating from server to cloud. So you've got manual migrations and automatic migrations. If you've got 30 users or less, um, we recommend that you do uh, a manual migration. Um, we'll be able to provide you with a step-by-step -step guide uh, of how to do this. And if you speak to a Tableau account manager, they'll be able to give you 60 days grace period for both your server instance and your cloud instance uh, at no uh, additional cost. Um, so that you can complete the migration from your server to cloud. Now, if you have 30 or more users, we definitely recommend that you automate the process through Bistry using our tool called TabMove. Um, the reason that we say 30 or more is that the more users that you have, the more likely that you are to have more content, more workbooks, more data sources, permissions groups, users, all of that. Um, so what we're trying to do here is we're trying to eliminate the potential for human error and optimize uh, this migration process. It's also a really great opportunity to retire old workbooks that aren't being used uh, anymore. So it's a great opportunity to, to, to clean up your Tableau environment and, and move that, uh, move the, the, the workbooks that you're using that is only necessary uh, into your cloud instance. One thing that a lot of server customers are constantly asking us is that we've got multiple sites within our server. Can this be consolidated? And the answer is an absolute resounding yes. Uh, as you can see through the images here, you've got site A and site B. Um, and yes, these can both be consolidated into Tableau online site and they'll be named project A and project B. If you've got more than two, then this is still possible. Um, it adds to a layer of complexity, but it's more than possible um, with, with TabMove. What we will do is we'll help provide the mappings um, just to make sure that everything ends up in the right place. Data connectivity. So this is another thing to be aware of uh, when migrating to cloud is that if you have a lot of on-premise uh, data sources, you may have to use what's called uh, something called Tableau Bridge in order to um, to, to bring these data sources into your Tableau cloud environment. So it's something just to be aware of. If you do have any questions around Tableau Bridge, definitely recommend putting them in the chat uh, as Timo is in a much better place to, to answer them in terms of how it kind of works um, much better than I can. Uh, but it's just a, another thing to be aware of and can add uh, a layer of complexity to the migration. So the tab move, how does it work? So. You've got your server instance here. 
what we'll do on a really, really high level is we'll make a copy of your content uh, from your Tableau server environment. We'll download that and put that into a local repository on a virtual machine environment. So what we'll be downloading is we'll be downloading all of your assets. So your workbooks, data sources, projects, schedules, favorites, permissions, groups, users, all of the assets that you use. Um, and essentially what we'll be doing is then uploading them into your Tableau cloud environment. Obviously this is a really basic high level description of, of how we do it. Um, but that's the general gist of, of how it works. We'll also provide the mappings and uh, any transformations uh, if needed during this migration. In terms of the project approach, it's really, really simple to get a migration started. First, we'll do a free migration scoping call. We'll run through a series of questions and basically estimate high level in terms of costs and effort required to move you from server to cloud. We'll then book on a workshop and final scoping call. Um, this is where we can test our tab move, um, our, our tab move uh, product on your instance, just to basically iron out any kinks uh, before the actual migration and make sure that everything is set for when we do migrate. And then finally, this is where Bistry comes in and, and really uh, uses our tab move team to migrate you over from server to cloud using our tab movers. I'm now going to pass over to Josie, who's going to talk to you about MPB and how they receive some great value from Tabmove. Thank you very much, Tom. <clears throat> so I guess, you know, it's all good and well us preaching about Tabmove and all the benefits that it offers. Um, but essentially, if we're being honest, the proof is in the pudding. So there are two customer stories that I want to walk you guys through today. This first one, I had the privilege of working on myself um, at the back end of last year. And essentially, it was with a company called MPB. They had their Tableau renewal coming up in March. And they got in touch with me in December wanting to move from server to cloud within the space of two months. So it's, this was a bit of a challenge. Obviously, they had 500 users, over 150 workbooks. It's a very busy time of year, and it's our busiest time of year, but also people are on holiday. So it was tricky, but we managed to get a scoping call booked in for January. And once we sized up the migration, we were able to book it in for February, and we were able to complete it, I'm happy to say, within 10 days. So this really benefited MPB because they were able to meet the deadline of their renewal and it really didn't have a big impact on their day to day, which I think speaks for itself. In terms of some of the good feedback we got from MPB, I will leave you guys just to read some of those, um, those quotes. One thing that I would like to point out here, which I think is quite cool, is the fact that I reached out to the head of data, Nikki, asking her if she had any feedback for us. And she came back saying that the CRO had to ask whether it had happened as it was so seamless from a C-suite perspective, which I think, yeah, Zevni speaks to how quickly we were able to do it and how not disruptive it was. The second customer story is TVH Parts. So I didn't work on this personally. This was uh, from the Belgian team in Bistry, but I think the numbers speak for themselves. Uh, we were able to move to over 2,000 users and over 2,000 workbooks over to the cloud from server. It was 100% was 100% migrated into the cloud and at a 20 times faster rate. Um, so why this really benefited TVH, if they were to do this themselves, it, if they were to do this manually, first of all, there would be the risk of human error that they would be running. And it would probably take them around a year to do a migration like this manually. So for Tab Move to come in and reduce the time it takes for them to get onto the cloud, it allows them to carry on with their work. It allows them to save money on resource, save time on resource, um, and essentially be able to start using the capabilities that Tableau Cloud has to offer faster. So there is a little barcode there. I would suggest if you guys are interested scanning that, it is a very interesting story and there's some feedback from there from the customer as well. 
Moving into pricing. So pricing for tab move, it's very straightforward. We do a fixed price um, for any engagement, so any migration. How it works, we'll do a scoping call. We will then, depending on how many data sources, how many users, or how many workbooks you guys have, et cetera, we will then put you into one of these four buckets. Um, once you're in that bucket, it is a fixed price. So if you're a medium engagement and we go under the 10 days or over the 30 days, you will still be charged that same price. Um, in terms of an extra large engagement, which is one that I would point out, if we think that the engagement is going to be over 50 days, we will then um, deal with that separately and we'll send you bespoke pricing specifically to that. Another thing I would like to draw your attention to on the slide is, as you can see at the bottom of the medium, large and extra large, there's a little AWS uh, logo there which I will explain on the next slide. So this is really a cashback program, um, which you can apply for if you purchase Tableau Cloud via AWS Marketplace, and if you want to do your migration specifically with BizTree and Tab Move. Um, if you do do those things, you are eligible to get 10,000 euros cashback for your Tab Move migration. And just worth pointing out that that is specifically for medium, large, and extra large, it does not include the small package there. Okay, so we are nearing the end of this webinar. We're gonna move into Q&A in a bit. So we do, we hope you guys stay on and there will be questions and answers after this. Um, we hope you guys have enjoyed what we shared with you today. And just to make life a little bit easier, we have put three options here in order for you to move forward. On the next page, I'm gonna show you a QR code, which you can scan. And once you scan that, you can type in and book in a call with us, depending on which option you choose. So option number one, straightforward, you're on server, let's get you onto cloud. Let's have a tab move discovery call. Option number two, you're already on cloud, but you haven't started using Pulse yet. Um, we run a Tableau Pulse Quick Start workshop which takes two days. Within those two days, we'll get you set up with the correct KPIs. We'll work out with, we'll work out your data sources so that you're able to just plug into Tableau Pulse and start playing around with it. And finally, we've got the third option, which you know you're maybe not sure what to do next. You've heard a few exciting things today, but you don't necessarily know how to move forward absolutely please get in touch with us if this is the case we would love to sit down with you um, ask us any questions you want if you want help um, building a data strategy we're absolutely happy to help you do that so this is the qr code that you guys can scan and it will take you to a form you can fill out the form and we will then get back to you in due course in order to set up a call to discuss things further Okay, so we are at that time. Oh, is that we're at that time of the day where we are going to be doing the Q&A. So, okay, yeah, section. Can you guys see my screen? Yes, we can. Yeah. Does it have Timo on there? It does. <laughs> okay, great, sorry, I've lost the thing. So yeah, I'm moving over to you, Tom, please. Can you run the Q&A? Thank you guys very much. And Timo, over to you and Tom. Thank you very much. Right, so I was here all along and we've been monitoring the questions coming in throughout. And um, I think it might make sense to go back to you, Will, first, if that's okay, because the first questions we got were on Pulse and we have two of those for now. So um, let's go immediately with that first question coming in from Paul, who was wondering, mm -hmm. due to the nature of their business, um, some of their data would never be able to migrate to cloud and to Tableau cloud more specifically. Paul's wondering whether Tableau has any plans to offer these kinds of capabilities, Paul's and other AI related stuff uh, to customers that don't currently think cloud is an option. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what, I think it's, it's, it's an interesting question to ask because you know, as everyone's probably seen over the past few years, especially since the, the acquisition, there's been a big drive towards a, a cloud-based environment for, for Tableau. Um, but at the same time as well, you know, half of our customers are server customers, right? We still do see that use case for that. That may be because, you know, as I said, it might be a, a security piece. It might be that they, they were server customers, but now moving across to cloud customers. 
So the investment hasn't stopped on that server side, but all I can say for now, and because what we've seen is that there's on cloud, there's more investment for that side because it's, it's easier and quicker for us to deploy these new features, especially with this race to AI, I think you'll see across a lot of different platforms. Um, that's why we're seeing AI first on that side of things. We haven't heard anything that, you know, it's going to be available on server, but as I said, th there are developments constantly going on this side of it. And I, I couldn't imagine there would be somewhere where possibly it wouldn't exist. But right now, I think this year, especially, you're going to see everything coming out on the cloud. But I would definitely keep, you know, be aware of and listen to the, 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 the next releases and stuff like that, um, as it might be down in the pipeline, but I can't, I can't commit to it, that's going to be a feature that's going to be available soon. Of course, so we'll stay tuned. A second question for you, Will. Um, Daniel mm -hmm. is very eager to get started with Tableau Pulse, at least that's the impression I get, because he's asking about um, metrics and whether it's possible to extract metrics out of existing dashboards or whether you need to take specific steps to set them up mm -hmm. you know, for that, for that particular use. Um, and yes, so the metrics feature that we're um, seeing um, is actually being sort of um, sunset um, in, in that process. And that's because it's being replaced by the pulse metrics. Now the pulse metrics um, are, they're built differently. I mean, if you have the data ready, if you're looking to talk about sort of, you know, um, calculations that you've put together for those particular metrics, you can just pull those calculations directly into pulse like we've seen and I showed you. And, and include them in, in that part there as well. There is also an advanced elements where you can begin and do more calculations within those metrics. But essentially metrics as we know them now are going to change. Um, and then what's going to be happening is you're going to be then taking the metric from Pulse and embedding that back into a dashboard. So you're going to be bringing that functionality of Pulse into a dashboard itself as well. So metrics aren't disappearing, they're just changing them as we know them now. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you, Will. If you don't mind, there's other uh, Pulse questions coming up as that topic mm -hmm. is being elaborated on. Um, someone's asking, Felix is asking, whether there are any plans to take these Pulse metrics and the overview there is, uh, the built-in one, not when you embed them in dashboards, and make that one customizable or, um, well, I, I would say suitable to have a large number of metrics on that screen. It's what, yeah. what they're looking to do. So the way that the, the phone experience is, so it, you, you go, you access it through the Tableau app that you have on your phone. It's in the bottom right-hand corner and you can just and log into that. Um, and essentially imagine, I mean, I think, you know, everyone really knows what it's kind of like to scroll through your phone, right? Um, and imagine kind of like an Instagram news feed or something like that, where you're scrolling through. So what will happen is your metrics will be, you know, um, organized sort of vertically. You have a filter at the top that maybe you want to focus on metrics based sales based on marketing or something like that you then click in you have that um, formatted for your phone screen and then underneath it you actually have the ability to go and ask those questions press those buttons go and ask the follow-up questions all right that sounds like a good flow to work through these um pulse really popular because more questions keep coming in i suggest we you know stay on topic here, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then what we'll do is there are tab move questions as well. We'll get to that after we go through the Pulse questions. Um, John is asking whether the data for Pulse has to come from one specific data source or whether you just throw Pulse onto your database and it gets the data from there itself. Mm -hmm. uh, so like any good you know, best practice when it comes to Tableau, having your data correct is going to be the best version of the dashboards in your report. So Tableau Pulse runs off published data sources, okay? So as long as you're publishing that data source to your site, um, you can run that through um, a prep flow if you wanted to bring that from multiple data sources um, and have that as a singular data output and published on a refresh schedule when you're running that flow into that data extra. Um, so there is, there's many ways you can go about it, but I think the best practice is realistically, you want data we're kind of calling it the Goldilocks version. You don't want it too raw. You don't want it too aggregate. It needs to be just right. There's other parts where you want data that's regularly changing because that allows the, ins um, the the AI behind it to generate those insights that we had a look at. So I think that's something that you can go with. I've actually got a lot of documentation about this, about how to get your data prepared for Pulse. So always speak to your AEs regarding this and make sure that you know, you're following those best practices because when, even when I first started using it and I wasn't following those best practices, I was coming back null values or errors. And that's just because the, the data is not formatted correctly for Pulse to be able to use. 
All right, makes perfect sense. As you say, that's always been kind of the the entry point for Tableau is to have your data curated and someone with the right knowledge take care of it, and that democratize democratizes it really for your organization mm -hmm. now through Pulse as well. We have a few questions that are still Pulse related, but are starting you cool. know to transition towards um, our other topics as well. So here's Cedric asking. Um, about the fact that they're using Tableau Server right now and considering cloud, their question is license related, specifically whether a regular viewer can also use Tableau Pulse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, the experience I showed you there, the first part, right, the building, that's for creators and explorers. The second part that I showed you after I saved that definition and published it, that is for creators, explorers and viewers. So viewers have the ability to, to log in, open up a metric, ask questions, drill down, share that with other people in the business so it's really accessible for everyone in your organization just depends do you want to go be able to ask your own questions or you're just looking to be able to drill in further right absolutely then one more transitional question will that i think you can help us answer um daniel is um probably considering tableau cloud but they need to know where tableau cloud is hosted they're asking specifically whether it's a salesforce environment or if it's a generic uh, AWS, Google Cloud, or something like that? So from what I believe, it's AWS. Um, I, I'd have to double check. I think it also depends on where in the world that is, because you have the different data hubs, and you can choose which data hub you want to have your you know, your, your cloud instance host in, whether you want it in EU, UK, US, that side of things. So I think that's a question kind of, that can be more specific based around where you want it hosted. Um, but I know majority of the stuff we have is based uh, around AWS. Yeah, for what it's worth, I've heard the same things, you know, executing migrations and confirming that for some clients. It's AWS as far as I know, plus there's a layer called Hyperforce, which is the Salesforce flavor, if you will, on top of that. So mm -hmm. um, I think you can think of that like uh, an optimized delivery platform for the services Salesforce has, which are then um, on AWS. But then again, of course, indeed, um, there's the regionalized aspect of it. So, you know, specifics for that would come up in, in your particular conversations mm -hmm. around that. All right, good. So um, those questions were now about the transition to cloud. And we have a few specific tab move questions as well, which I will gladly address then. Um, Simon is inquiring about the typical migration speeds for tab move. And I think we can go into that topic a bit deeper. So some high level um figures have been shared like um our our um example uh clients actually our actual clients of course but the ones that we presented to you um migrated in around 10 days but depending on your scale that may differ of course and when we say scale we'd also be referring to the sizings the buckets the the sizes that josie has referred to. So I'm going to bring those together and give you a few examples of deployment sizes and um, migration times we've seen with them. So um, in the context of those buckets, what we could consider small, and this is of course always pending an evaluation and a confirmation after we've spoken, but you know, a, a small deployment is typically between 100 and 500 users. You have about 100 workbooks and the total size on your server uh, is, is not more than, or not much more than 50 gigabytes, right? That's a relatively small deployment. I think it's almost guaranteed we're gonna migrate those even faster than those 10 days. You know, we can talk about three, four, five days in those cases where there are no exceptional types of databases or connections being used. These are in fact, um, you know, you might or might not expect that, but it's uh, kind of the bulk of the tab move migration work we're doing. I mean, we do these like you know all the time they come in and in just you know a few weeks we go through the process of evaluating testing and then executing that and a total of five working days you know we're actually actively doing that and then it's it's done now we can start scaling and then you know we could consider a deployment with over 500 users but below 1500 maybe about 500 workbooks and maybe some data sources that require a bridge require some special attention to ensure connectivity could consider that medium also a very common um, category of migrations that we see and i think then we are looking at those 10 days in fact the two clients that we we spoke about were probably gauged uh, to be in the medium segment at least that's what i would you know estimate them to be today with the information we have um, 
then of course there are the, the larger deployments and you can go all the way up to enterprise. We're working on, on deployments that have, um, you know, not just a large environment, but several large environments that you are um, then combining into a, a smaller number of Tableau cloud sites because that makes sense organizationally because it's more convenient for their users to use that one platform, you know, for, for various reasons. But there we're talking about, um, I, I think the largest one until now is 130,000 users. Uh, we're talking 25,000 workbooks, terabytes of data. These are, of course, not projects that we finish within 10 days. There's a lot of work going uh, on around communication and governance and just, you know, the process being carried out as, as transparently, but as seamlessly as possible as well. So there's much more preparation in those cases. Um, we, we plan things well ahead of time and we know exactly what the outcomes, outcomes gonna be when we perform that migration on a specific day, uh, which is kind of the, the, the flip around day, right? You know, the, the, the day on which everyone has been told Tableau Cloud is coming to your organizations, all 100,000 viewers on there. And we've prepared so meticulously that, you know, by then, we know that it's going to take us, let's say, 72 hours to move all the stuff, but then, you know, that transition happens seamlessly for them and all that preparation um, in those few weeks that we then spend together lead up to all that. So that was a long story, a long answer, but, you know, it, it's it's normal because there are so many specific cases, but in general, I think you can assume that that move would be speeding up the migration work. Now, um, Indra had another question that was a bit more specific, but I think we can um, bring up here because that question while being specific to their environment will I think translate to some of you know um, the other environments that, that you guys work with as well. Here specifically Indra is inquiring about MySQL as their primary database. And when they move to Tableau Cloud, how they would ensure connectivity from Tableau Cloud to MySQL. And we tried not to get too technical during the, the part that Tom did where Bridge was presented, but maybe, you know, if there is, if there is a question around it, it's worth just adding a few words to that. Um, Tableau Bridge there is an option when you're considering the connection between Tableau Cloud and your on-premise or your virtual private cloud data sources. So you could host that MySQL database on-premise. It could be on your AWS VPC. And, and that could be, by the way, any type of database. It could be Redshift, it could be Postgres, it could be Oracle, it could be any flavor that you have. This is why the question is relevant to everyone because any kind of connectivity from Tableau Cloud to your database uh, would be addressed here. And so, yeah, I guess, I guess taking a step back, the question is what are the options? Do you need to start doing network, firewall configuration, et cetera? Uh, do you need to use bridge? Um, so those are options indeed. Um, it's not always just you know a yes or no answer. Um, it's something that we would evaluate with you to see what the most seamless and the least um, admin heavy solution would be probably. Um, in some contexts, Bridge is the mo more structured and sturdy solution, but that does require some infrastructure to be set up to host that bridge. But then you have a very um, structured way, as I was saying, to approach all of your data on-premise through that one gateway. Um, in some other cases, just whitelisting Tableau Cloud to access that one database that you need to use with it is a, is a simpler solution if that adheres to the security uh, requirements your company has. So it's kind of a conversation to be had, but um, yeah, there are a few options on the tables there, on the table there. Now, um, another question coming in, I'm just reading now because um, those were the questions we had up until now. Daniel is asking, and I guess, well, this is maybe for both of us, um, an additional question to the cloud source. So if AWS is not an option for you as a company, is there currently an alternative in terms of cloud provider? I know about plans that Salesforce might have. I don't know, honestly. Um, that is that, that I was reading that one and, and I haven't come across that question before. Uh, I think, to be honest, that is one to take take up directly with your, your Tableau account executive, who will be able to give you more information specifically on that piece. Uh, if there is, I'm not aware of it, but as I said, there may be something out there that is not an option. Yeah, definitely possible. Up until now, we have one more from Christoph about data security and Tableau AI. And Christoph is asking, 
that um, about the fact that Tableau says that if they enable Tableau AI, SFDC may access their customer data. What if there is sensitive data in there? There's GDPR compliance uh, um, that you know applies as well. Um, they're very keen to use that, but they're not sure whether enabling Tableau AI will still make sure they remain compliant with GDPR and the sensitive data. Yeah, I think you know when it comes to AI, any any this this is where you know the security element is always going to be a, a huge part to this. Um, and being able to have the access to that. And one of the reasons why it took quite a long time for Pulse to come to market was because we wanted to set out that kind of trust layer. So I think when I'm, I'm looking at the statement that they had um, access to now, so most of the data you know, that we, we have access to anyway is kind of platform usage data. You know, how many views are you building? Who's you know, clicking on what? You know, is it, is it bringing value to as a customer? We don't have access to the data, underlying data itself, and we're not using the sort of pulse to be able to inform our models. I think when you're going to that level and you're asking those questions, which I think every organization should, right, when we're, we're talking about AI, I think the most important thing is actually to go in and look at the Salesforce security paperwork that we have. And that's mainly because every organization has different you know, levels of security they have for their data or the different agreements with their own customers about what, what they're going to be doing with the data in which they're using. So there is a, an MSA, um, which we have, which as a Tableau customer is part of the signature, right? Um, when you signed up and did the contract. So I'd definitely look into the MSA and any of the addendums for that, um, and especially the Tableau and the AI pieces that have been included to those recently. Those are all publicly available online. You have to do is to type in Salesforce MSA and you can see all the extra information inside of there. Great, that's the place to go. I'd say this is all the time we have for questions now, but if you do still have questions or wanna follow up, the QR code is still up on the screen. I will hand over back to Josie for the closing remarks. Thank you, Timo, and thank you, Will. Um, yeah, we just wanted to say a massive thank you, guys. Thank you so much for joining this webinar. We hope that you have found it useful, and we encourage you to feel free to set up a call with any one of us who was speaking today, probably not Timo, but Will, um, Tom, or myself. We would be happy to help you, whatever your issues or questions may be. So thank you very much.